Welcome to Pieces with Ben. In today's video, I want us to look at WIEC, uh, Physics 3 Optics Experiment. Uh, WIEC is out for this year, and um, I really want you guys to get your straight A's. So, this is the reason why I'm making this video. So, watch this video till the very end. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, and share the video. Thank you. So I, I want to teach us what and what we need to do in WIEC question number two, which is optics. In question number two, optics, these are the materials that we need. We need a tracing board, we need the, the mathematical set, and instead of mathematical set, what is uh, most important here is the protractor. Very important. And then we, you need this. Without which the experiment cannot take place. This is a rectangular glass block. You need thumb pins. You need thumb pins. Four of them. The thumb pins will be fastened at the four edge of the paper. The next thing you need, you need optical pins. Just four. You need optical pins. You need optical pins, just four of them, they are okay, four optical pins, and then you need a very sharp pencil, you need at least one, two, three, four, five, and six, eight, four papers. Now let me educate you on what to do. This experiment is performed on a topic called refraction of light. Refraction of light is simply the bending of the rays of light when, light tra when, the, when the rays of light travels from one media to the other of different density. So the reason why refraction takes place is that the two media are of different density. That is air media and glass media or air media and water media. Now, what this experiment is trying to do is that you know, the examiners would love to ask you to, to verify Snell's law. But there's something I want you guys to know. You see this guy in my hand, the rectangular glass block. Examiners can use this single guy or this single setup and ask you like 1000 different experimental questions. So, what do you need to do? What do you need to know? The, the only thing you need to know here is the, the basics. The basics behind this experiment. The ray diagram, the, the geometry, the drawings, and everything which I will assure you of. Now, the next thing you need to do is the, four, the, the, the eight four papers are said that you need. There are six of them. Now, this experiment is not performed in a group. Because on the D day, you will have to submit the six, the six or five A4 papers. You will fasten them with uh, a stapler to your answer booklet. Now, this is what you will do for me on that day. On the D day of the experiment, you are going to write candidate name, center number, candidate number. Experiment one. On the second paper, candidate name, center number, candidate number, experiment two. That is, if you are to run this experiment for like five or six times, each of the paper will carry your details. That is instruction number one. Number two, 
you must not have more than four holes. You're going to have two holes on one side of the block. We call them the incident optical pins. The emergent optical pins on the other side. Meaning you are not going to have more than four holes on this paper. So the, the, the number of holes we must have on the D, they are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight on each of the papers. And as you put your holes, you must try to, especially these two, these two guys, you must put something like this. Pin one, pin two, pin three, and uh, pin four. Good. So that is instruction number two. The reason why I'm saying is that one of these people may fall off, but because your details are written on it, they will trace it back to you. Very, very important. Now, the next thing I would love us to understand before we go in for any experiment in physics is the theory of the experiment. Every experiment in physics uh, marries together or combines together all the four scopes of physics. We we'll have the experimental aspect of physics, the theoretical aspect of physics, we we'll have the mathematical aspect of physics, we we'll have the pictorial or the graphical aspect of physics. Now, when you are preparing for any experiment, you have to prepare all round. Meaning, you have to master the theory of refraction of light. What is refraction? That is another theory aspect of physics. The examiners may ask you to define refraction. The examiners may ask you to state the laws of refraction. The examiners may ask you to state Snell's law of refraction. The examiners may ask you to define total internal reflection. The examiners may ask you to define different concepts or do some little mathematical calculations. So if you don't prepare in all these areas, you will not perform very well in your experiment. So that is very, very important. The diagrams, the calculations, we prepare for them. The next thing I want us to look at here uh, is uh, the precautions. Every experiment must be performed with precautions. How cautious were you during the experiment? If you are not cautious, you are not going to get accurate results in your experiment. So it is very, very important that you keep these precautions in your mind. So for this particular experiment, I will give you three precautions. Number one, you are going to make use of this guy, the protractor. And so there is a way you stand to measure the angles. So how will you state it? You state it as follows. I avoided error due to parallax while taking reading on the protractor. Your optical pins must not bend like this. Once your optical pins are bent like this, they are condemned. So you must use optical pins that are straight. And that's a precaution. How do you state it? I ensured my optical pins were erect, meaning standing upright. And they can only stand upright when they are not bending. Number two, number three. I ensured I used a sharp pencil. Why are you using a sharp pencil? Good. You can see that the calibration on the protractor they are very, very tiny. And so if you use a very thick pencil, it may contain, it may consume like three lines. And you'll be thinking, I mean, it, it will contain like three of these small, small lines. And then you'll be thinking that it is just one line. And then you will have error in your angle measurement. It is, it is in this, it is in light of this that you have to use a very sharp pencil. Number four precaution. The incident optical pins must be placed 4 cm apart. They must be placed 4 cm apart. You have to measure it 4 cm apart before you place in your rectangular glass block. Something like this. So this is also very, very important. Now, I believe you are curious. You are waiting for me to run this experiment. Now let me shock you. Do you know that all I just said, they are right here on this channel? 
I have done all the videos. I never knew that this experiment would be coming up this year. So kindly click in the description box below. The videos that are showing beside you, their link are in the description box of this video that you're watching. Click in there and you'll find a video link to all of this video. I've done a, a very, very comprehensive video on refraction of light through rectangular glass block. So what you need to know are in that are in these videos. You need the basic. What you need to know are in this video. The basic is what you need to know. So if examiners will ask you any question because you have known the basic, you will know how to go about it. What, what, what are the basic? The basic thing here is to find the refractive index of this glass door. And the refractive index of this glass door is from 1.5 to 1.7. Good. So, the process involved in finding the refractive index is so tedious that when, once you master it, you can run any experiment set with this guy. So what you just need to do is you, re you repeat that procedure for like five more times or six more times. Hence, the papers I was suggesting initially. It will also interest to know that I have done a video on metrics, question number one. Find it in the description box below. Now, examiners will bring three questions. You are supposed to choose just two questions of your choice and answer. And those two questions are 25, 25 marks. On my channel, I have also taught you guys how to plot your graphs accurately. Search any video that has to do with graph plotting to learn the plot graph. Now, before I end this video, I want to assure you that the content on my channel, they are sufficient enough to give you an A in physics. Every video you see on my channel was intentionally published. Watch all the videos. I publish those videos because those are the areas examiners always love setting questions. So every video you see on my channel is for your good. So watch all those videos and you will be good. Last but not the least, I would love you guys to drop your questions in the comment box and so that I will respond to it. If you have any confusion, you can also drop those, con uh, those questions in the, comment in the comment box. I will also drop a link to some support materials that you guys did in these uh, exams. So in summary, uh, before I end this video, before the school will permit your physics teacher to handle you as a street, it means they trust your physics teacher. I am begging you to trust your physics teacher and answer the questions that he will suggest to you on the DD. This may sound so ugly, but it is the truth. You must not go to the hall and claim you know all. Examiners always permit physics teachers to be in the hall to guide you when you are confused. So please, on the D day, listen to your physics teacher. This does not mean your physics teacher will answer the questions for you. That is wrong, and that is called examination and practice. Your teacher will only guide you. So trust in the ability of your teacher to guide you on the deep day of your experiment and you will come out clean. So for me, I, I already know what and what to tell my students and I already told them what to do and that is why I have dropped this information for us here to, to watch and also follow suit. May God bless us and I wish you guys success in all your exams. Thank you and God bless you. Bye bye.